Hi, I'm Krista Brisky richard with the Chicago Park District, and welcome to the eighth season of Night Out in the Park's cultural event series. This year's presentation of cultural experiences will undoubtedly be one to remember, but equally as exceptional as all the rest. For the first time in history of this outdoor arts and culture initiative, we're taking live performances and entertainment from our neighborhood parks into your home. Join us virtually as we travel across the city to enjoy rich cultural performances by some of our city's most talented artists. More than 40 of Chicago's very own arts partners from diverse disciplines will present works available for you and your family to watch on demand from the comfort of your own home. Thanks to Mayor Lori Lightfoot and the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events and our newest partner, WTTW, for their continued support. Tune in to watch WTTW's presentation of Night Out in the Parks, The Stars in Your Backyard. The series of broadcast performances will feature 17 of our Night Out performers. Connect with Chicago's rich and cultural scene through our virtual series, Your Night Out at Home. Each week we'll premiere new digital performances by local artists. From dance and jazz to theater and world music, enjoy engaging entertainment in your own backyard, balcony, or living room at www.nightoutintheparks.com. Until we meet again, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you at the park really soon. Jackie, I go by Jackie Arte. Tonight we're going to be doing a really cool Calavera or Sugar Skull, Day of the Dead Inspired. So what we're going to start off with is a quick sketch. And all that sketch consists of, and I already did one, but I'll go with it with you guys. Almost like you're doing a circle. That's going to be the skull or the cranium. And then we're going to go off to the side, just about a, just a little bit to the side. And we're going to round off down here. That's basically going to give you a really cool um shape of your skull and then uh we got to find our middle point which my middle point is going to be right about there so what i'm going to do really quick is i'm going to turn it around towards me and i'm going to do a like an upside down heart that's going to be the nose because we want it to be kind of playful and then i'm going to do two circles more like ovals they don't have to be perfect and then we're going to do a line kind of like a smile just like that all right, I hope you guys like that. The colors you should have or you'll be working with are gonna be your primary colors, which is gonna be red, blue, and yellow. So don't be afraid. You can make all kinds of colors with that, all right? Um, and you're also gonna have black and white. I normally do teaching classes. I always like to start from the back forward, which is what I tell my students. So we're gonna start with the black and we're gonna do our background black. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit my canvas is slightly bigger than yours and i'm just using a bigger canvas so that you can actually see if, if i were to use a smaller one you won't be able to see it too well you should have an array of brushes the favorite one that i like because it co it covers a lot is gonna be flat top so i wet my brush and i dried it up because i don't want the excess water if you have excess water on your brush that's gonna make your paint runny and it's gonna drip and you don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to lay it flat. We're going to go around. This is going to give it a nice outline. And feel free to, you know, don't put too much paint. About that much is good. And then we're just going to go around like that. So we get some nice clean lines. And the reason I'm doing a black backdrop on this is so that the bright colors will stand out. If you don't want to use a black backdrop, that's fine. You could use something different. I believe in artistic liberty, so feel free to make it any color you desire. Just remember, we will be using those colors inside the skull. So I paint pretty quick. So it's gonna take me um, a little less time maybe to, to paint my backdrop, but feel free to go ahead and paint your backdrop. And the reason I did the outline around it first is because it needs to dry first, and that's my first my first layer of paint. If your backdrop looks a little choppy, that's okay. For me, it's more like you're just giving it texture. So don't feel like it has to be perfect, all right? You can also do some fun stuff with the backdrop. You know, once you're done with the painting, and you can take it home, um, you can add some nopales to the back. You can add glitter to the back. You can splash paint on there. You could write the names of your loved ones that have passed away. 
You could do that on the forehead too if you want. Whenever I do classes for the other muertos, I always talk about, you know, the significance of Day of the Dead or Dia de Muertos and how it's truly a celebration of life and how it means a lot to, to people in Mexico. Um, there's regions that prepare for it almost all year long, especially like in Michoacán and Pátzcuaro, um, La Ciudad de México, Mexico City. It's, it's big festivities. Um, and I like to make my calaveras happy and full of color, kind of like the one that's up there. And that's to celebrate life. This is why we have so many vibrant colors. And each color represents something different. But what I do know is that the mirror gold is one of the most important things that we use for Dia de Muertos. It's also called Simpasuchil. And it's the flower of the dead. It's actually a Nahuatl word. It means, I think, flower of 400 petals. And we use that specifically because it illuminates the path for our loved ones back to us. Isn't that pretty? Then I'm going to take another smaller brush. I'll show you guys right now. This is the brush that we're going to be using. See that? It's a smaller one. It's also flat and it's flat top. I like these a lot because it gives me nice crisp lines. And I'm going to paint the eye black. Be conscious of how much paint you're putting on because the more paint you apply, the longer it takes to dry. And I believe we only have 30 minutes to do this painting. So if you paint, if you put a lot of paint on there, it's going to take you the 30 minutes. So don't do that. <laughs> and the heart, well, the nose is like a little heart. It's upside down. And you know what? Feel free to move your canvas upside down or right side up whichever way is easiest for you there's no right or wrong way to do it and the reason i'm doing this before i paint anything else once we're going to paint this white as well and when we paint it white you may lose the lines or the lines may get or they may smear and we don't want that because then it's going to create gray these are little tricks so it's not really straight but that's okay because you know what the sugar skulls are not very symmetrical either so don't feel bad about it all right now i'm going to get a pointer brush you see that right there it's very thin and i flatten it out the reason i flatten it out is once again i like lines so it looks like that and every time i use a brush i wet it first and then i dry it off um i don't dry it completely i just make sure the excess water is off because we don't want it to run and if it starts to run like i said it's going to start dripping and we have such a beautiful layout already that we don't want to ruin it and not that you could really ruin a painting, but if you're on a time constraint or you got to hurry up and do some stuff, you don't want to have to wait for it to dry completely and then paint over it again. So to save yourself some headaches, make sure your brush is dry. So we're going to go here and we're going to do like a smiley face. And I'm not applying a lot. I'm applying very little because once again, I need it to dry. You see, just like that, guys. All right. Now I'm going to pour some white. And I didn't want to add the line work to the skull like now. I wanted to add it afterwards because it'll be easier. Once again, if you do the line work with your pencil, and also you'll probably be using an H2 pencil, it'll smear. And we don't want that because it's going to create like a gray, a gray look on there, which is not where we're going for. We want it to look like a sugar skull. So we'll do the lines afterwards, and I'm going to show you a cheat way to do that. So now we're going to pour some white and remember what i said the reason i did this part first is to make sure that it's dry so some parts are wet which is okay i'm just making sure it's dry most of it's dry there we go just that one little part was wet that's okay make sure yours is dry And we're gonna go ahead with that brush again, the one that we use for the background. And dry it up. Make sure that there's no paint on there. This is how you could do the, the paint test, okay? It's wet and I don't have any paint on my hand. The water may be a little dirty but because I've been painting. But if you don't see paint, like paint dripping, then it means it's clean. You always wanna make sure you clean your brush, especially if you're going from a darker color to a brighter color. Since we've been using black and we're going to go into white, we got to make sure our brush is clean, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. Also, another little tip, if you're going to continue to paint at home and you're inspired by this and you want to do more in your casa, never let the paint get down here. When you do that, you could ruin your brush. And I'm all about taking care of my tools, right? This is my tool. 
So let's make sure we keep them clean. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start painting in. And the reason we wanna paint it in is because it makes it a little bit more vibrant. And you also don't run the risk of like the paint not standing out. It's gonna look kind of choppy if you don't paint it in. So this is almost like a primer. All right, the eyes dry, eyes dry. My nose looks a little wet, but that's okay. See, and I'm just going right around the eye. And I don't wanna use a lot of paint. Remember guys, this has to dry. And the white also helps clean up the line work. And you could tell if you, you've missed a spot, if you can't really see it, just get your canvas and go like that to it and you'll see how it, it kind of, um, there's a glare to it. You wanna see that glare. And where there's not a glare, that means that's where you gotta paint it in. So I kinda gotta see my own glare right now. There we go. Success. Okay. I'm gonna just keep going around. Now, here's the tricky part. Gotta make sure our mouth is dry. And mine is not completely dry. So, I'm gonna paint around it. And this one's dry, so I could go over it. This one's a little dry, so I'm just gonna go gently. Gently over it. Now you see how I created that streak? That's not a problem. Let me get some more white and I'm just gonna kind of blend it out. There we go. These are still wet, so I'm just gonna get in there. Now, I'm a little bit more experienced painter. If you wanna just get in there and you don't wanna go over the lines, what you could do is get the smaller brush and just paint in. There you go, guys. All right, now I gotta make sure that my white's dry up here which it's not, but that's gonna give us time. So since we're using primary colors, we gotta use the primary colors to blend, right? So our primary colors are gonna be red, yellow, and blue, okay? Your colors may not look like mine, which is okay. It's gonna give you almost the same result. Um, I normally like to do flowers, like flower petals around my eyes. You don't you have to do flower petals. You could do dots. You could do circles. Um, I'm going to use like a pinkish color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my red. And this is how I like to start. I like to start with my eyes first because that's going to map out everything else. Okay. I'm going to start with my red and I'm not going to pour a lot. I'm going to pour very little because if I do a lot, it's gonna be more red than pink. And how you get pink is you add red and white. Simple as that. So just a little bit of red. And I'm gonna use this small brush right here, okay? So all I'm gonna do is get a little bit of red, like the tip of this right here. Maybe two of those, not too much and more white than anything. So I get a nice puddle. So it's gonna give me this nice color right there. You see that? I like that. So what I'm gonna do now, this should have allowed time for my white to dry. So I'm just gonna touch around it. Feels pretty good. I think we're in good shape. And this already gives you the shape of a petal, believe it or not. So what, what I like to do just to map things out for myself is I'm gonna go right above here, not even an inch. It's gonna be like, for you guys, it'll probably be a quarter of an inch. You see how I did that? And all I did was just lay it flat and up. And I'm gonna do that over here. Just like that. If it goes into the, the eye, that's okay. 
because we're gonna black it out again anyway, right? So we're gonna go real quick again. And we're gonna go in between those, just like that. It's just the one, just the one stroke, okay? Don't, don't worry about going slow. Don't worry about how fine it looks. Just quick little stroke. And it's better if the paint is on the tip of the brush, just like that. And I'm gonna go in the middle of these guys too. And do that. There we go. This one looks a little separated, but that's okay. I like to have like a color palette or a color scheme. So if I already got pink, um, I'm probably gonna use a yellow and a green. Now to make green, we do a mixture of blue. You wanna do very little blue, okay? Just cause my blue is very dark. I don't know what kind of blue you have. Um, but if you use a darker blue, use very little because this pigment will go a long way. And then we're gonna do some yellow. You want your green to be bright, use more yellow. You can even do a dot of white in it so that it stands out a little bit more. And let's see here, I'm gonna get a dot of blue, like that, and a bunch of yellow. And we're gonna mix that. And it still came out a little dark, but that's okay. We're gonna add a little bit more yellow to that. You see, mine's coming out like this. It's coming out a little dark, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a dot of white to lighten it. Now, normally I tell people, you never wanna add white to anything to lighten it because it's gonna make it pastel, unless that's what you're going for. But in this case, since I'm mixing from scratch, it's okay if I use a little bit of white because it's not gonna be really pastel. And we have a really cool looking green, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna clean off my brush really good. So it looks like that. And we're gonna dot around. We're gonna dot around the nose, okay? So we're gonna do one big dot right there, one big dot there, on the corners, in the middle. And feel free to reapply, okay? You see? And we're gonna dot in between. The reason I do it like that is once again, it helps me map it out so that it looks somewhat symmetrical. That one's a little bigger, but that's okay. Now, since we already have the green going and I wanted to kind of, I wanna use the green in other places, we're gonna go ahead and mix it up a bit, okay? Let's see here. Um, the most common design you see are lines and we're gonna stick with that. I like to do more traditional. Calaveras, so we're gonna do a dot right there, and the dot's going down like this. See that? And then we're gonna start with the line right here. And I'm just gonna twist my brush so I get a nice fine line. And what you're doing is you're bringing the lines, you, you're angling it off so you could bring it back towards that dot. Pretend like the dot is, is the target, right? Where you wanna end up at. But you don't, you don't let them touch. And then I just keep going. And to get that fine tip, all I'm doing is twisting and pulling up. And then I could do a dot here, 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 and here. So I do four dots. Let's do those same four dots over here, 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 and here. All right. Let's add some yellow. You know what? Your yellow may be very translucent, which means it's gonna be really transparent. So why don't we mix it up with a little bit of the red so we get a nice orange. You're gonna have more yellow than red because red is your dark color again, okay? So you're gonna pour yellow, a nice blop on there, and then you're gonna do a tiny little dot about that much. You guys ready? And let's get orange. It's gonna look a little weird at first, but if you add a dot of white to this, it's gonna give you a nice orange orange color. Let's go to add a dot of white. Now, if you don't wanna use these colors that I'm making, feel free to use your own color. 
You don't have to do it like this. This is just what I want to do. And I'm going to give it kind of like what we did here. I'm going to do down here on the teeth. But let me clean my brush off really good. The reason I'm cleaning it off, even though I'm using it to blend, is that all the all the paint's down here, and I don't want that. And we're just going to fill in the teeth like that. And we're going to do that down here as well. We're going to give it a dot right around the middle. Go up a little bit higher. And then the last one, you can go all the way up here like this. Now, I like to fill in stuff, so I'm going to use my green again, and I'm going to do a line here and a line there. So it ties it all together, and I'm going to do the same thing down here, and I'm going to do that line like that. And I'm also going to dot some more, do a dot right there, a dot right there. I'm going to go in with my black again. Now, you can add more to this, guys, okay? Don't feel like this is the end of it. You can add more lines in there. You can add more polka dots. Um, you can potentially add flowers around this. So there's a lot that could be done. We were just limited with time for this. So I'm just gonna make my my circles where they were. And I wanna make sure that my lines over here are good to go as well. So I'm just gonna go over one more time and make sure that it's bold. And there we go, guys. And make sure you design your canvas. Make sure that everybody knows that you painted this, okay? Thank you so much for watching, for hanging out. Have a feliz día de muertos, and until next time. Bye, guys.